London Mayor Sadiq Khan has launched a plan to extend free school meals to every primary school child in the city. The scheme will start in September and it's set to run for a year with meals being given out in term time only. It's an emergency measure intended to help ease the impact of the cost of living crisis on young children. The cost of the plan is £130 million. That'll come from an unexpected surplus in business rates and council tax income. And it will save families around £440 per child over the course of the year. 270,000 pupils are expected to benefit from the move. After the announcement, Khan appeared on BBC Breakfast, where he explained why he's decided to introduce the scheme. There are children who are receiving meals because their teachers are bringing in food to school. But also we know there are children, and it's heartbreaking, because they've not brought in a packed lunch, they're not receiving free school meals, they're pretending to eat so as not to be embarrassed. I know when I was a child, and and I'm now 52 years old, but I still remember the embarrassment, uh, the shame, at me receiving a free school meal token, and the majority of my peers uh, not. That that's stayed with me for 40, 50 uh, years. And so by having it universal for all our children to receive free school meals, it gets rid of the stigma, gets rid of the shame, but also it means all our children will be eating together, great social skills, but also it means better educational attainment. You know, Price Waters Coopers have done some research. They've shown by a combination of educational attainment doing better, better mental health and physical health, at least to better productivity. So there's a net benefit to our country by all our kids getting free school meals. At the moment, to qualify for a free school meal in England, a child has to come from a household earning less than £7,400 per year. According to the Food Foundation, that threshold means that there are 800,000 children living in poverty in England who don't qualify. And that's because that threshold hasn't been raised since 2018. Now, that's, of course, a pretty strong moral argument for extending the scheme. But Khan also mentioned economic reasons for the policy. He cited research published in October last year by Price Waterhouse Cooper. They looked at the costs and benefits of universalising free school meals to both primary and secondary school pupils over 20 years. And according to their projections, it would cost £24 billion to extend the scheme to all primary and secondary school students. But they argue this would be outweighed by the long-term benefits, which they suggest would amount to £41 billion. They say that's due to food cost saving to families, reduced NHS costs and increased lifetime earnings produced by higher educational attainment. Now, if they've got their sums right, universal free school meals would seem like a no-brainer But not everyone is convinced. Tory MP and former Treasury Secretary Simon Clark posted this on social media. Using millions that could be spent on targeted support to vulnerable children to subsidise free school meals for middle class parents who can afford them perfectly well is the opposite of progressive politics. Classic Labour. Ash, I want your take on this. Sadiq Khan, seems like a good policy from my perspective. But according to Simon Clark, he is just using taxpayers' money to subsidise middle-class children who should pay for their lunch themselves. How do you respond? I mean, that's that's always the Tory excuse whenever you have any kind of universal service provision. So when you have had, you know, free travel cards for under 11s, or if you've introduced something like I don't know, the NHS, they'll go, oh, but couldn't this be done in a more cost efficient way? You know, couldn't you target the support to people who really need it? And then you look at what they're doing in terms of supporting the most deprived and at risk uh, households, children, individuals in our society, and they're not doing the targeted support either. So let's just, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. Look at what they're really doing. They're not, uh, you know, tailoring and targeting their support. It's those people who have experienced the most criminal forms of government neglect over the last decade and a half. Now, there are, I think, some, you know, really basic reasons to support universal provision. One is that quite often it works out being more cost effective because means testing something requires bureaucracy. It requires people who are sifting through applicants to work out whether or not they meet the thresholds or not. You're also not always going to get that right. So inevitably, there are going to be, in this case, children who fall through the cracks and are going without a lunchtime meal when they're at school. Then I think there's also a third thing about what universal service provision does for us as a society, which is I think we can all recognize that if you segregate things on the basis of class, 
if you say, okay, well, this is what you get if you've got money and this is what you get if you don't, that ultimately makes us more socially divided. It's something which, you know, helps stream us into this deeply unequal social settlement that all of us, even if, you know, you're not necessarily as much of a lefty as me or you, you go, I don't want to live in a society that's like that. So I think one of the things that universal service provision can do is in this kind of prefigurative way is bring us together in a way which emulates the sort of society that we would like to be rather than the quite shitty one that we have. I mean, there is also one last point that I want to make, and it's about what has changed in the last 12 years of austerity. Now, even if we hadn't been living with austerity, I would think that free school meals are a great policy for the reasons which I've outlined. I think that you cut out a lot of the waste that you get with means testing, by which I mean bureaucratic waste, uh, and also the inefficiency of kids falling through the cracks. I also believe in it as a uh, social value. Um, but one of the things that austerity has done is that it has led to an absolute ballooning of child poverty. So child poverty rates are around uh, 35% for London, 38% for the Northeast. And even those figures are quite um, misleading because obviously some areas are much richer and some areas are much poorer than others. So if you were taking an area like Kensington or Mayfair, you'd have very, very low rates of child poverty. But the area where I live, for instance, you've got child poverty rates of upwards of 45% in some little pockets, around half, if not more than that. So these are really high rates of child poverty. And one of the features of austerity is that because you've had flatlining wages, more precarious forms of work, as well as very punitive benefits system, you've had the growth of in-work poverty. So really for the first time uh, in this country's uh, post-war history, the majority of households which are classed as living in poverty have at least one adult that is in work. So you have a real problem here, which is the system uh, which is supposed to distribute enough money to you know, raise children that aren't starving has totally broken down. And there is a real urgent need for state intervention. So I think that this is a, a wise policy from Sadiq Khan. I would, of course, like to see it rolled out to secondary school and sixth form pupils as well. Um, but it's also smart politics. It's smart politics to go, you know what, we're not going to do this whole thing of you know, wait for the general election, wait for the general election, wait for the general election. It's not just about jam tomorrow. You get some jam today. And in terms of Labour's chances, that's not a bad thing. I'm just thinking more about this Simon Clark tweet, like, because, you know, whatever you offer, whatever anyone suggests a universal policy, the Tories said, this is a waste of money. You're going to be subsidising middle class kids um, who don't need it. I mean, you get Tories talking about it in the NHS as well. Why are we, why are we g g giving people free operations when they could pay for it themselves, et cetera, et cetera? So they say, okay, fine, let's uh, let's target it. Do you want do you want to target it? And they say, oh no, we couldn't possibly target it because then we're disincentivizing people from becoming rich. If we only give this to poor people, then we're we're rewarding people for being poor, and that will disincentivize hard work. Okay, so what is your solution? Oh, we'll just cut it all and we'll cut taxes. Sorry. We, we don't like universal benefits. We don't like targeted benefits. Let's just have no benefits at all. But that's where the Tory argument always ends up. And I mean, that's the story of the last 13 years. I suppose they might say, OK, well, we'll target it, but then we'll also add this sort of ritual punishment that makes it humiliating. That's what they do with job seekers allowance. So they say, oh, yes, yeah, so it's obviously not going to be, we're not going to do a universal basic income. We only give it to people who are currently unemployed. But so we don't incentivize um, lethargy. What we will do is make people do these humiliating hoop jumping exercises where they have to apply for a million jobs a week, even if they've got no chance of getting any of them or they wouldn't be suited to them. The Tory way. Sadiq Khan, of course, isn't the first person to implement universal free school meals for young children in London. Newham, Islington, Southwark and Tower Hamlets already fund free school meals for all primary school children. They're also already available to all primary school children in Wales and in Scotland. All children can get them for the first five years of primary school. If you spot a running theme there, it's all places where the Tories aren't in control because the Tories don't care about kids getting a decent lunch. It's, in, it's, it's incredible that the, the threshold is £7,400 a year before you're entitled to free school meals. doesn't matter how much. So if you've got four kids and you're earning £7,400 a year, that doesn't... I, I, don't, I don't know how that maths is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. 